I've been a police officer, actually a deputy sheriff, for uh, almost 10 years now, and it went by very fast. Well, you know, when I was younger, I, I, every every boy, you know, wants to be a police officer or a firefighter. So you know, you had that. But uh, growing up, I necessarily didn't didn't think I'd be in law enforcement when I was like a teenager. You know, I had other career goals. However, um, you know, started a family, got married, and um, you know, it, it turned out to be a really good career decision. And um, once I started doing it. I really enjoy what I do. You get to make a difference. Um, you know, you don't always have a good day. There's a lot of bad days. You know, you just have to deal with that. You have to have thick skin. But um, you know, once I went through the process and started, I, I really love it. So we were doing an emergency petition one time. I worked at the domestic violence unit in the sheriff's office and uh, went down this hallway and it was a very thin hallway so only one of us could go at a time so we're trained to stack on each other when we enter the room. So this guy was, uh, he had some mental issues and he was uh, suicidal and homicidal. So uh, we made the decision I was going to be the first one through the door. So I, I made entry through the door as we trained to do, and um, I saw, saw the gentleman, he was laying on the bed, he immediately grabbed a hunting knife, and he was, he was elderly, so it, it took him a while, so he was trying to come to me, um, and I had to make the split decision at the time, to either use you know, the vehicle force option, if you get too close with that knife, or other force options. So uh, I immediately transitioned to my taser, um, and I tried to use my de-escalation techniques to, to acknowledge who I was, because I could tell he was confused who I was, to put the knife down. Um, thankfully, he, he eventually realized that we were the sheriff's office, we were legitimately there, and uh, he put the knife down, I, was able, I didn't have to do any force on him at all, and I was able to de-escalate the situation. But for a second there, I mean, it definitely was a life and death situation, and uh, you know, you never know what you're going to get into in any, any second, split second, it can be like a death. We have to have at least two days of training a year for our qualifications, and then we also have a third day we go for, for more just training rounds and shooting our, our weapons and everything, it's like more of training tactical situations. Whatever that's up, there's one in there, in there right here too. So you just put your hand in Alright. Go ahead. Take it right here. Uh, but mandated as far as the in-service training, we have two full 10-hour um, blocks of in-service training, so that's 20 hours. Plus we have uh, like online module trainings, and they're normally about two to three hours each. We, we go in these situations where we have to, uh, someone's been deemed uh, mentally ill and they're a danger to themselves or others, and we have to literally go arrest them but not bring them to the jail, bring them to the hospital. And these are actually our most dangerous cases because they're volatile, they're already suicidal, homicidal. So we had a situation, for example, it took four of us to get this guy into custody and he was like a former state collegiate championship wrestler. father would have told us that before we had to fight the guy but um, we had to use a lot of force to get this guy under control he just wouldn't quit it's just some some guys that some are mentally ill and some of the people that are, are heavily uh, on narcotics um, they're the strongest and most deadly people you're going to come in contact with
That's the dramatic radio call from a Philadelphia police officer the moment after he was shot in the line of duty. Commissioner Richard Ross says the suspect ambushed that officer in West Philadelphia just after 11.30 last night, firing 13 times. The five-year veteran of the force fired back. He did manage to shoot the suspect who was caught by fellow officers. Because, you know, nowadays people are targeting law enforcement officers. And if you drive the same way every day, it's very easy to see that. So it's a good idea to maybe change your route every once in a while. You take the highway, you take, you know, the whole route that day. So that way you're, you keep yourself and your family safe. For the most part, um, definitely pray pretty much every day before I go into work, when I'm driving into work. And even sometimes, you know, it, I know it's cliche, but we get a call. Like I've been in a situation where I probably had to draw my, my firearm on someone, I say almost 10 times since in my career now. Um, two of them, we actually ended up uh, getting an, uh, an active shooter who just shot someone while at the bus stop. And I was the first on the scene. He was coming out the car with his rifle, he went down the rifle. Whoa! He almost had to use lethal force on him. Thankfully, he finally dropped the rifle and came out. But like before that particular call, you hear that dial tone go out, you know, the emergency signal, and you're the closest officer there, you know it's real, it's life and death. Shots fired, someone down at the bus stop. So right then and there, as I'm, you know, you, if you get tunnel vision, you have to try to fight that tunnel vision. I'll say a quick prayer. Lord protect me, keep me safe, let me, let me have good judgment here. And it, it happens kind of simultaneously. I don't even think about it. It's just a really quick thing in my mind where I'm focusing on what I have to do. And I definitely, definitely rely on prayer. The best day in law enforcement is everyone goes home safe and no one gets away. I heard some like down on the floor. Now, even loud and we got shooters. Yeah. Watch his door, got security good. Check. 